Uh, so something uh, mentioned in the article um, coming from the job candidate side really, really resonated with me, and I'd love to discuss it further. So uh, it says, quote, uh, on the candidate side, start with narrowing down the problems you would like to solve and the roles you would be interested in pursuing. So we're always letting people know on this show, and we just talked about it a little bit here, but that there's more to cybersecurity than pen testing and incident response and secure coding. Uh, but I want to get into this idea further of candidates asking themselves what types of problems they'd like to solve as a way of refining their focus of study and learning. So uh, this um, almost seems like it's screaming out for a book pitch or at least a really <laughs> solid flowchart infographic. So uh, can we discuss some of the job roles that line up with some of the problems to be solved that you identified? Yeah, and, and you're right. There are actually some tools that are emerging to help people understand um, mm -hmm. both where their technical skills lie as well as their aptitude, because yep. a lot of this really is about aptitude and what we want to what we want to do. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, some of the things is to really, really to get into what it is that that person does want to do or mm -hmm. accomplish. I mean, I, I ask this of anybody who comes to me as a, as a mentee, you know, what do you want? And a lot of times I get, I just want to make a lot of money and yeah. that's okay. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. If, but if, if your driver is just money, you might be better off going out to Wall Street and being in a hedge fund because yes. while this is not a, a low paid career, it's also not going to get you unless you're, you, you're like you know a, 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 an Elon Musk. Um, you're probably not going to become a billionaire by if you become a threat hunter. So yeah, ask right. yourself seriously what you want to do. I've also had a lot of people say, I want to get the bad guys. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, but what does that mean to you? Does that mean that you want to go through a whole bunch of log files, find something that indicates where that and hand that off to law mm -hmm. enforcement or to mm -hmm. some, you know, Interpol or something so that then they go? Or do you want to actually be the person who like busts in the door and says, yeah, we have traced that ransomware back to you, back mm -hmm. to this house, come with us and physically arrest them? Because those are two really different sides. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of it. So, so yeah. And I think not understanding that distinction is also something that keeps some people away. Like you get that fear of like, well, if I'm in cybersecurity, suddenly there's a target on my back and my whole family's back or whatever. If, you know, yeah. if, if I get too close, you know, cause you know, we, we did a, 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 an episode where we talked about the, the Bahamut uh, threat group over in the, you know, in the Middle East and, you know, I was like, is this even, you know, what, what's going to happen? Am I going to start getting ransomware? <laughs> and it's like, no, of course not. We're way down the food chain. But like, yeah, I think that still also keeps people out of certain aspects of the job. Like, I just don't want to even deal with that mess, you know? Yeah. And some mm -hmm. people want to help people. I mean, yeah. like, that's, you know, like, yeah. do you want to help people? Well, then there are a lot, as I was saying, there's security awareness training, there's yep. educational opportunities evangelism. Some people really love, they love selling and yeah. there's a lot of sales jobs and security. Yeah. So then they, they see sales of a really good product as their version of, of helping people. So yeah. thinking about what it is that the number one thing is you have to get up in the morning and most days be really excited. <laughs> yeah. I get it that not every day you're going to go like, yay, I get to go to work. Um, <laughs> but if you can, if you can get up most days and go, you know, I really want to do this work. This is important work for me. Mm -hmm. Then you're in the right place. So I realized that that's the, what's the important work and what's in cyber are two different things. But then once you understand what's really motivating you, then you can start looking at all the different paths in cyber. And as we've, we've spoken about, there's this huge spectrum of opportunity yeah. um, in cyber. So thinking, but where do you want to focus? What are your skill sets? Instead mm -hmm. of trying to just go, I think I have to be this to get this job in cyber. Think yep. more about what it is you bring and then starting to understand where bringing that is going to be the, is going to have the most effect. And that can actually, sometimes people who've been looking for jobs, you know, I've talk to people that aren't super technical, but they think they have to get a, a you know, entry level analyst or, um, you know, or threat hunting job and they keep getting no, no, no. And then they start turning to something like they're an artist who does absolutely beautiful renditions of very tough technical security concepts yeah. that other people can consume. And suddenly their career just opens up in a different direction. So um, yeah, don't be afraid of what it is that you bring to the table because you're going to be able to, to find ways to apply that and don't try and, and fit yourself into a job that just isn't right for you. And there's there's one more thing I wanted mm -hmm. to, to say, Please. if that's okay, Chris. Yes, um, of course. 
which is that um, a lot of people think that you have to get your first job in cyber. But if you are more on the, well, actually any side, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, the technical side, but, you know, this could go for the, the legal side for education, get skill sets in that adjacent piece and then maybe see if you can transfer that to cyber. So what I mean by yeah. that is, is, you know, a Unix admin, a great mm-hmm. Unix admin is going to become a fantastic security yes. <laughs> admin because they right. understand how Unix works. Um, a developer, some of the absolute best application testers, penetration testers you're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, that I've ever met, they were developers. They didn't have any interest in security. But you know yeah. who can figure out how an application works really well? The <laughs> person who wrote it. Yes, yeah. so, right, right, right. So they they can also help to figure out. So when they look at the, and in fact, I was talking to one penetration tester who said, and I guess we're trying to get rid of that term. I don't know what the new term is, um, but an application security tester who had been a developer for, for years and years, decided to go into cyber, took a class, and after a week was sitting next to folks who'd been doing application security testing for years. And mm. was a week later, because of their expertise in development and all of their knowledge of it, that one week course then really put them into the ability yeah. to be a practicing tester, which is, is great. So don't don't write off doing something that's not in cyber, but is adjacent to what you want to do, yeah. and then being able to transfer that out. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.